But I've been marveling at uh, the community around Wheaton and the great care and prayerful attitude of the decision making that has gone on. Several weeks ago, our president in our cabinet meeting led us through a time of lamentation and prayer. And one of the verses that I've been holding on to is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 24. That the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. It's in that spirit and in that attitude that we're called to do important work, even if that work means making difficult decisions as we did this year, this squad, to send our students home during spring break and not have them come back. And what we witnessed was a faculty committed to quickly going online. And despite the challenges, the excellence in the education served and the care for our students has been exceptional and has not suffered. Granted, there, uh, the adjustments can be trying and difficult, uh, but what we are doing now as a COVID-19 response team is we've broken down into several groups. One is planning for the fall, and another one is planning for enrollment. The two go hand in hand, but what we wanna make sure is as we plan for the fall, that we are planning to have classes on campus with orientation programs starting in late August, but it's also, like all other schools, it's also important that we prepare for all, any and all contingencies because we know how fluid this is and we are charting unknown, uh, an unknown course. But we're doing it with, I think, great leadership, great care, and a prayerful attitude. So I just wanted to express that to you as families considering Wheaton for your sons and daughters. I know that several of you have already confirmed and it's exciting to see that happening. Uh, even in the midst of all of this, I, I called a, a student, a parent who I know, and I said, tell me, tell me what Dom is thinking. And, the, and, and I've heard this repeatedly, and that is they want to go back to normal. They want to make plans for the fall. And so we want to walk with them as they do that, but we also want to be reminded that we don't know what the future holds but we also are planning for all contingencies. So I just wanted to share that with you. We meet every morning for an hour, uh, hour and a half at times, and uh, thankful for the leadership of the college and the community that is gathered around this important time. Thank you. Thank you, Silvio. And I uh, really just wanna say a huge gratitude for all of you to consider Wheaton. We do know about, I think about half the families on this call are actually having students who have said, yes, I'm coming to Wheaton. And we're so glad they've chosen Wheaton. And for those families who are still deciding what the next path is, we obviously hope and pray that your sons and daughters will choose Wheaton. And you, of course, can do that at any time you'd like at choose.wheaton.edu. But we wanna actually spend the rest of our time this late evening, if you're here in the United States, uh, going through and learning from our current parents about how they made the path to Wheaton with their students. I'd like to turn it over now to our current parents to give an introductions for themselves. Current parents who are here, we've got the Page family, the James family, the Frumke family, as well as the Savage family on the call. Uh, why don't we start with one of our current panelists and, and just introduce your names, what students you have at Wheaton or graduated from Wheaton, and how your family first found out about Wheaton College. Well, we can begin. I'm Clarinda James. And I'm uh, Jeffrey James. We have five children, and our two eldest are at Wheaton College, our only um, college-age children. And one is a senior, and one is a junior. And we found out about Wheaton because my brother, way back 30-plus years ago, said, you need to come to Wheaton. It has a great education program. I said, okay, I'll come to Wheaton. <laughs> that was pretty much the extent of uh, exploration of stuff. Because I was a TCK, lived overseas, I'm half Filipino, half Caucasian, so I bring that to the table as well. Um, and that's kind of how we yeah, entered in. Yeah. Well, you know, my story is a little the same. Uh, my brother went to Wheaton, and uh, when he came home, I think his freshman year, he said, you know, you really should consider coming to Wheaton. And I was so shocked that my brother wanted me to go to the same school he did. I was like, well, I guess I'm going there. So. <laughs> Uh, so brothers can have a great influence on your uh, education. <laughs> so that's how we heard, and our kids have heard uh, about Wheaton since they were kids, we, uh, or since they were babies. They have, now we found pictures of them in little weedy sweatshirts, and they claim that we indoctrinated them, even though we never encouraged them or 
you know, said things like you should go there or anything. But. We just kept that pretty quiet because we're local. We're in Naperville, Illinois. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Jane family. Uh, how about the pages? I'm Natalie. And I'm Brian. And we um, live in Homewood, Illinois. And we have a daughter who is a sophomore. Her name is Autumn Grace Page. And how you want to tell them how she came about to eat Wheaton? You probably remember better than I do. No, I don't, though. <laughs> <laughs> I still. There, well, I think, Jason, you already know. We, we have so many friends that have gone, gone to yeah. Wheaton. Um, we actually met Jason when he came to our daughter's uh, high school, Chicago Christian okay. High School. So when he was doing the recruiting and just, um, we thought he did a fabulous job with no beard at the time. And <laughs> so, um, but we, um, you know, we were looking at obviously at, at other Christian schools, but just um, from the time we visited, interacted with other people, other staff, we just thought that it was fantastic. And it's, it's been tremendous for her. Yeah. I'll accept the compliment only in slight. You don't remember the other parts of that night. Uh, how about the Frompies? Uh, Jennifer, would you mind introducing yourselves? Sure. Greetings from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm John. I'm Jen. And uh, we are both actually alums from Wheaton, uh, cl both class of 92. So going back a little bit there. Um, our youngest right now is a freshman at, at Wheaton, Thomas. Uh, he plays on the tennis team there. And then we've had uh, two daughters graduate from Wheaton, uh, one last May and then one just in December. So um, all pretty fresh. All very <laughs> fresh. And we're, we're, we're living the dream going through, through it with Thomas again for the next four years. Um, I come from kind of a, a Wheaton family. I was the fourth of five kids that ended up going to Wheaton. So um, I'm not really sure how that happened, but it was kind of like a brother sort of sister thing. You know, it's like, wow, this is, this is a great community. The people are phenomenal. Um, and um, yeah. We just heard about Wheaton from a family friend. And I applied to two schools, and Wheaton was it. It was pretty simple. That's great. Thanks, Rompies. And last but definitely not least, Robin and Jack Savage. Do you mind unmuting and introducing yourselves? Hello, everybody. My name is Jack Savage. And I'm Robin Savage. We are in Lindenwald, New Jersey, which is in the Philadelphia suburbs here in South Jersey. Um, we have um, a, our oldest son is a graduate, as well as our daughter-in-law. And our youngest son is a sophomore this year. Um, I first heard about Wheaton um, through my Christian school's college fair. I actually applied, was accepted, and went somewhere else. Um, is how I first heard about Wheaton. And I actually did not attend Wheaton College. I'm one of the few, it seems. Uh, I attended one of our local state colleges here in New Jersey. Uh, that was the path that God had for me. And um, we rediscovered Wheaton when our older son, Joshua, was attending high school and he was looking at different Christian colleges and Wheaton was one of the tops on his list. And uh, when we went out to visit, we were so impressed. We truly felt that that was the place that Josh was supposed to be. And since then, like we said, he graduated in 2017. And in 18, he finished with his master's. He got married to a young lady from Wheaton. And now our sophomore is there. So that's our journey. So great. It's so good to get to know all of you and share your stories. So thank you for being here and volunteering your time uh, for the sake of prospective parents and their students too. We'll dive into a couple of questions that we prepared, but I wanna remind you to use the group chat feature and message your questions to everyone. We really do invite your questions. As much as I can provide a few sample things to help folks know, we really want this to be a how-to guide for you. What questions you have about Wheaton College, how students can get connected there, and what your family actually needs to know to make an informed decision, and of course, the one that we pray to be able to say yes to Wheaton College. But we'll start with a few uh, prepared questions as you keep using the chat feature to ask your questions as you go forward. You'll see the chat feature down at the bottom of your screen if you're on a PC or on a Mac. So first question, uh, we hear a lot about the academics at Wheaton College. Uh, and I will also just a little plug. We have all next week, um, almost 10 different academic sessions from the variety of schools available at Wheaton College where our deans will share about the academic offerings. But as we know, college is not just a place you go to get an education where you are really formed to be who you are. And that often means being and doing things outside of academics. So maybe for our, our parents here, can you talk a little bit about where your students found themselves when outside of class? Well, for our girls, um, they really invested a lot in student um, 
res halls. They, they love being a part of that. Anna was um, a CLC, which is, I can't remember what, what it stands for. It's like Christian Leadership Council, basically assistant RA when she was a sophomore. And then she became an RA, a resident assistant. Our daughter Grace did the same thing. She wasn't an RA because of her nursing schedule, but she became Auntie Grace for one of her best friends. So she would go and invest in a freshman floor because she loved res life so much. Um, they did intramural soccer. They in, were involved in exercise classes. They were in ministry of tutoring after school and going down for Grace, going down into the city to work with La Rabida, which is um, works with sick children in the hospital um, situations. And they, the one thing I would preface that, it sounds like they did a lot and wow, that's a lot. And I would say, don't do it all. You know, pick one thing, but it's a great thing to pick something to be involved in because then you have a tribe to be a part of and you're ministering and thinking outside of yourself. Yeah, and I would I would add that um, Grace also, uh, our second daughter was on the media team and she specifically chose that because she wanted to stretch her skills and meet a whole new group of people um, in her junior year. Um, and so they've all kind of picked different things <laughs> Uh, and tried different things over the years that they've been there. So it's been, a, they really enjoy doing a lot of different things. And so we had a daughter who was involved in Women's Corral and our other daughter did the acapella group on campus. Um, what was it called again? Uh, good I can't remember the name of it, but it was a, it was a really fun group. Um, we have a student athlete, he's on the tennis team. So we only got just a portion of the tennis uh, season this year as a freshman, but um, he's looking forward to that next year. Uh, one of our daughters was editor-in-chief of The Record, which is the weekly paper on campus. Um, what other extra? CLC. Oh, yeah, we had a couple, we had a couple yeah. CSC, CLCs. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Lots to do. And I, I, I would just echo that. In, um, just mm -hmm. encourage your kids to try things, right? And I think Wheaton's really good at that. Um, I remember Thomas calling home, like, maybe the second week of school, and he told us he tried out for a men's glee club, and we're like, wow, you, you don't even sing, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, I just felt like God wanted me to do that, and like, well, did you make it, and he's like, well, no, and I'm like, that's good, you failed already, you wanted to get that, that, that failure out, so, but it, no, I would just encourage you, you know, your kids to try things that are new and maybe outside outside their wheelhouse or whatever. And uh, we, it's a safe place. Wheaton's a great place to do that. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a good place to do that. I would probably concur with that. Um, our daughter was kind of um, an introvert um, coming into Wheaton. And so one of the things that she did was she um, was part of Honey Rock, Honey Rock. And she did the orientation, which was huge for her. Um, by the time school classes started, she had a lot of friends. And you know, we, when we moved her in, she's saying hi to everyone. And I'm like, wow, you're really kind of getting acclimated. And one of the biggest things that Wheaton did for her was, I think it was inside of her all the time, but she just really just started trying new things and um, really blossomed. Um, she, like we said, she's a sophomore now, um, but just really in some ways unrecognizable. Um, her the things that she's done and you can kind of highlight because she's quite involved now. Well, as Natalie said, because with her being an introvert, it was kind of surprising because she was concerned was she going to meet friends. She had a great group of friends in high school and then she got to Wheaton and suddenly she changed into this different person that she decided she was going to go out for student council, freshman <laughs> student council. And then she calls and tells Natalie and Natalie's like, really? you're doing this? And she was like, mom, it sounds like you don't believe in me. And so um, we've kind of been laughing as we've watched her go through some of these other stages, including, um, you know, some of you are familiar with, they have what they call diaconoi, you know, which they, the nickname is for deeks. And she decided she wanted to apply and go through the process of becoming a deke, became a deke. And we almost just blacked out. We just couldn't believe that this was our daughter and how she just, just really changed. But it's, but it's really, that was um, our prayer, that it was going to be, um, she was going to be unrecognizable and in so many ways. That's exactly what we've seen. She even did the, as a deke, they did the air jam, which, um, you know, basically you're just kind of standing up and acting and, you know, not singing, but uh, what are they, lip syncing. Lip -syncing. Um, she told me don't mess the lip syncing part up. But um, it, it's, it's just been tremendous for her. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great.
you know, we have one question come in that I know so many families have, especially when they're looking at a school like Wheaton or residential college. Uh, uh, Hans and Lori Stricker asks, how, do, how does roommate selection work? I'll answer that really briefly, but then I'd love to have our current panel, our current parent panelists share a little bit about residence life, how they saw their son or daughter um, invest in kind of that first year of residence life and maybe their trajectory after that. I think that could be helpful mm -hmm. for families. So roommate selection, um, it starts off basically first, the, and all of your students can do this even now. Every admitted student, once they um, open up their NetID account, it's their Wheaton specific portal account. They actually can log into their portal account and it, even right now today, fill out um, their housing survey. This is where they can talk about their preferences, a little bit about their profile. Are they a night owl, early morning? How clean or not clean are they? A couple things to help people get to know each other. And at that time, um, and up and through June, students can actually request a roommate with someone that they know. So if you or one of your ch children have a connection that they know is also going to be going to Wheaton, they can request each other. We'll honor those requests up through June. Um, if students do not know someone else, um, like many of our students, um, again, 80% of our students come from out of state. Many students are coming to Wheaton who do not have another connection at the college already. They can do one of two ways connect with current students, either through our admitted student receptions we'll be having here in April virtually, uh, connect on our Facebook class of 2024 page, which your student has gotten emails about multiple times, or using the survey tool in the housing uh, profile, actually find people that are compatible with them based on the responses, try and connect that way, um, and then see if you'd like to live together um, and choose that. If you don't make a choice, you'll be assigned someone based on compatibility by our housing services, and uh, I'll say what our Dean of Residence Life says. First years have less conflict than sophomores actually. We find that um, mm -hmm. so many of our first years don't actually pick, they just get assigned to someone based on compatibility. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty good. Sophomore year students think they know who their best friend is and they're gonna live really well together. And then there's a ton of conflict sophomore year. So just word to the wise, no matter what you go about it, we can definitely find good ways. I do want to remind folks um, that if you are not on the panel, we do request that you mute yourself so that everyone can see our panelists. But I love our parents now to share a little bit about how their sons or daughters first began living at Wheaton and a little bit about their trajectory through residence life. So our first, uh, our oldest two girls um, decided to go potluck and just see who they got. We, of course, put a lot of prayer into the roommate situation. <laughs> and, you know, they, and it was, it was really interesting because um, our oldest daughter got on the bus to go to Passage for, at the airport. She didn't know a soul. And she sat down next to a girl who she was actually assigned to be roommates with. And she is best friends with her today and they've been graduating for a year. It's, really that cool. was kind of a the dream team situation. It was great. Then her second daughter had a different experience, but you know what? She had a great roommate and they were very compatible. They ended up going separate ways just with grace and you know, no trouble, but um, it was just a different story. And then our son, we actually had a friend who we graduated Wheaton with whose son was coming in at the same time. And boy, that sure worked out for their freshman year so far. So there's, you know, a lot of different paths to take and they all kind of chose mm -hmm. their own way, which was great. And like my one daughter likes to say, it's either going to be a great experience or a really good story. So <laughs> that's, that's, <true. laughs> that's uh, great. Another thing I would say about res life is, you know, that freshman floor is kind of your center for social mm -hmm. activity to start with, because obviously everybody's just right there. And the floors have a ton of just a ton of group activities, even just meals and all that kind of thing. And I think they do a really great job. You've got your RA and your CLC, which they mentioned before. CLC is kind of in, uh, in charge of all the social stuff. The RA is, you know, there is another level up. Um, and so it's nice to have more than one point of contact on the floor. And I think that's been really helpful in our experience with our kids. Yeah, but the floor community is, is really huge. And, and I just think each year when we moved our, our kids in as freshmen, the sophomores, you know, that would move them in and help them, I mean, they really take them under their wings and kind of create that, that community that they have on the floor. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of been like that since we were there 30 years ago, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a community that really like, perpetually keeps uh, going forward, so. That's great. I don't see our, any of our panelists just jumping in to uh, answer more. So we'll, 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 we'll jump in. We'll <laughs> jump in, Mason. Yeah, please. So, all right. So, um, first of all, both of our boys, um, so it was actually a different entry. Our oldest son did not do passage, uh, but our younger son did. 
he went on Urban Passage two years ago. Um, and for each, that was the perfect choice um, for them individually. Um, what we found is that um, they, they both integrated uh, very well um, into campus. Um, so there's not, a, there's not a right way or a wrong way, especially going in uh, for that passage or not passage um, uh, decision. Uh, they both ended up on the, the same floor, just five years apart. Um, and, um, you know, I think one of our earliest uh, memories is our older son kind of cutting off our Sunday night uh, Skype calls because he was on his way to floor devotions. Um, it was kind of a, indicative of, of what that atmosphere for him uh, was like. Our younger son um, chose this year to be in one of the intentional living communities, one of the houses on campus um, that emphasizes racial reconciliation issues. And that has mm -hmm. certainly been uh, a challenge in a very good way um, for him. Great, mm -hmm. thank you. There are diverse opportunities, both when students can come to campus in their first year residence halls, all the way up through townhomes, apartments, and homes on campus, whether thematic or college owned. We're so grateful that um, residence life is there. And even for our students mm -hmm. now who are home, uh, because of the current crisis, we have many, many stories of how floor life is still continuing on, connections are still mm -hmm. continuing on, which is a beautiful thing. Shuri asked this question, which I think is good to talk about other experiences. Did any of your students study in the exchange program with other schools or abroad, and how did that go? So did any of your students uh, either looking at or actually complete a study abroad experience, uh, and how did that go for your family? Our older son, Joshua, he graduated in 17. He did, it started out to be a semester abroad in Japan. Uh, he was working there at uh, Tokyo Christian University, uh, studying there. Uh, it was a wonderful time for him. Actually, it was the first year that they reopened that program uh, to Japan after the tsunami had created such devastation many years ago. Uh, so at any rate, he was there and he enjoyed it so much that he worked out a situation between Wheaton and Tokyo Christian College to stay for the rest of the year. So he went back the second semester, uh, eventually came home in July. So he had such a rich experience and we were so appreciative of the fact that uh, Wheaton's staff was just so involved and were able to work with him to create an experience that was just second to none. Mm -hmm. Our daughter wasn't in a study abroad program, but she did her student teaching overseas internationally in Bogota, Colombia. And that was a really wonderful experience for her. Um, and she was able to still have the, the great support of her mentor. I remember her telling us, oh yeah, I just, I got an email, I'm, I'm continually getting emails from her head person in the department, just connecting with her, how are you doing? And it wasn't like, how are you doing with your lesson planning? It was like, how are you doing as a person? And that mm -hmm. meant so much to her, it meant so much to us too, that she was being cared for, you know, thousands of miles away from her education professors as she was doing this really challenging thing, you know, overseas. Yeah, and I, I just would add to that is I remember in orientation, or even when we were considering Wheaton, uh, with our oldest, how they talked about how, you know, uh, how they try really hard to make it a, affordable for your kids to spend a semester uh, internationally. And I just really was impressed with, uh, even though this wasn't a program, they really made it work. And they really worked with her uh, to make it because she did want it, wanted to uh, have that experience uh, and do her student teaching, even though that was a little bit more unusual in how they work, but uh, it was just a great experience for her. And we did really feel uh, that she, uh, even though she wasn't with other Wheaton students or anything, that she was really cared for by the Wheaton community when she was over there, uh, which was great. Mm, thank you. Yeah, we have over 70 study abroad programs that are semester long through Wheaton, not to mention summer long programs. And of course, as someone mentioned, uh, partnerships with other Christian institutions so that a Christian liberal arts education could be happening in many places around the world. The only continent we currently don't have a partnership with is Antarctica. So if your student is looking to go to there, you'll have to go somewhere else. But uh, anywhere else, we pretty much have options. And you can learn more about that on our website. 
Uh, we'll share links to this as we go on and do some follow-up as well. Uh, but look up our Global and Experiential Learning Opportunities, GEL, Global and Experiential Learning. And that's a great place to learn about all the different programs that we have at Wheaton. Sue Timmer asked a great question, which has been hit upon a little bit here. How have you seen God develop your child's faith during their time at Wheaton? Um, we recognize that all of our students who come to Wheaton are whole people. They're not just brains on sticks walking around campus, but they're whole people. So do any parents want to share a little bit about their students' faith trajectory? You may even want to talk, any Kim asked this, how are students plugged into the local church? If you can even tie some of those together or have different ways to answer faith development at Wheaton and also church involvement, I'm sure that'd be appreciated. I think that there's lots of opportunities for growth for students at Wheaton. Um, that's still part of our, our trajectory with our daughter as far as her becoming unrecognizable. Um, I think she really kind of got to know God for herself. Um, and, and that watching that journey was, has really been beautiful. Um, you, you know, she was involved in Bible studies um, on her floor. Um, and she's still, even now during this um, COVID-19, she still has a prayer partner and they're, they're talking, they're praying and encouraging one another. And, um, you know, um, just the things that she's said and even the chapels, there's just so many rich opportunities for students to grow in their walk. And I just like seeing how it just naturally kind of organically kind of came together. The things that we had taught her, you know, at home, and then for her to just say for herself, like, I just want to know the Lord on a, on a deeper level was really something pretty awesome for us to experience. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my son about this a little bit the other day, and he said it was just mind-blowing to, to hit campus, and all of a sudden he's surrounded by people with a very similar faith, because he really came from a school where he, he was kind of unsure about everybody around him. He didn't think really anyone got it, and he has just... Mm -hmm flourished in this environment he loves it so much and we had a similar thing we were talking to him on a friday night he's like gotta go mom and dad i got bible study and we're like what <laughs> like, it was just really a happy surprise but yeah to just kind of watch him thinking the bigger thoughts and um and he's like you know he he didn't have a whole lot of experience you know just in the actual word him and just the bible and so he's like yeah i'm reading this book today and you know it's just it's really been Fun. And then to see my oldest daughter too, and my older two daughters, just how far that they have come too. And when you when you graduate and you have that Christian thought class, and it just pulls so many Christian mm -hmm. ideas and all other faiths, and just kind of understanding where you are in that pool because you're going out into the world where there's everything. It was just such an incredible class for them, and they're still talking about it. You know, they still apply it daily. So that's been really really mm -hmm. neat. That's good. Yeah. You know, I, I just, uh, one of the things that they just started when, uh, is the Christ at the core curriculum, uh, when our daughter was a freshman. And so the, each year they have a book that all the students go through and they interact with it, um, in whatever their discipline of study is. And, and then they cross share that, uh, you know, with everyone. And it's just incredible, uh, the conversations our girls have had, and enjoyed and and grown uh, and and I echo the statements of uh, them just really flourishing uh, a great faith environment to flourish discover who they are and really you know uh, grow in their faith uh, has been a great experience. And I, I was asking my daughters just the other other day too, Jennifer. I was saying to them, you know, so how how is it that you become more like Jesus or how, you know, and she goes, Oh, that is a great question. I could say so many things. <laughs> and so one, so she said, like, I've learned to listen to the Holy spirit more, pray more. Um, and to speak words of prophetic encouragement to my friends that I can be a blessing and I can speak words of encouragement and challenge to them. And that, that, you know, I just watched them grow in the Lord. And I, our youngest son has said, man, Grace is always in the Bible, mom. And it's just beautiful to see the sim younger siblings going, wow, they're, they really see, they see the growth that even their sisters, you know, mm -hmm. have demonstrated. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you for sharing that. I'm so grateful to hear those testimonies of the Lord's faithfulness through the college, through churches, through one another. And that's such a gift to be able to, to see here. Uh, I've gotten two questions so far that are pretty similar. Deborah asks, what do you think sets Wheaton apart from other schools? 
And Leslie S. asks, what sets Wheaton apart from other Christian liberal arts colleges? I try not to tout our rankings too much. Wheaton is the premier Christian liberal arts colleges, but there are differences upon all the different colleges that exist. I mean, the fact that we're even on your family shortlist is a gift to us. There are about 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States. It's a lot to choose from. Uh, so maybe for the parents here, as you've kind of seen your students go there, some of you have gone to different institutions, maybe some of your children have gone to other places. How would you answer that question? What sets Wheaton apart from other Christian liberal arts colleges as you see them? Or other schools, it's maybe a little more general. Um, well, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Okay. Go ahead. You're um, the leader. <laughs> One of the things that impressed us so much when we visited Wheaton's campus uh, had a lot to do with our interactions and conversations with the students on campus. Uh, getting to just sit next to someone on one of the benches and saying, what are your thoughts about this college? And how do you feel about being here? And so many of the students said that Wheaton is intentional about our faith. And we could get that feeling just from being there. We were very encouraged. We felt very strongly that when we left our children there, they were going to be cared for, not just because of what was in their heads, but because of who they are in the Lord and that they were going to help our children grow in that. And that to me was just huge. We saw that um, so much when we visited. We felt it when we left our children there. Uh, we didn't have that same feeling necessarily from other campuses. And there are tons of <laughs> wonderful Christian colleges out there, obviously. Uh, but for our children, we were just thrilled. And to know that it was, there was such an intentionality in building community and caring for the whole child, that was just huge for us. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was the moment we chose Wheaton. We didn't tell our son, and we had to wait like four more months before he told us <laughs> what he chose. <laughs> Very good. A couple of questions I could just address from the admission side. John Farm, I believe, asked how many students at Wheaton are alumni children. It depends on the class year. In the last class that joined Wheaton, a little, about 20% of students are alumni kids. So 80% of students are not, they're new to the institution. Um, but of course, there's a pretty loyal following, as you can even tell among our current parents who attended Wheaton themselves or come from a generation, a, a more generational aspect of the college. Uh, but about 80% of our students are not previously connected with the college or having parents who have attended. Um, a couple other ones that came through was about uh, students starting and picking classes. Um, there are slightly different timelines for first years and for transfer students. Transfers usually actually get a chance to go first because we want to help make sure they're on track to graduate on time. So that is just one element uh, that we care deeply about for our transfer students. And since most of the families um, are first year families on the call, most of our students will begin picking their classes for their first year in July. We typically took that timeline so that families and students can submit any AP tests or scores from that spring semester satisfy general education credit, make sure they're always making progress to begin where they're going to go, and then have a firmly locked in schedule uh, in the fall after registering for courses in July. That's typically how we've done it. The second question that Clement and Ellen, Eileen Kim, excuse me, asked is what kind of advising do they get from Wheaton for this process? I'm really excited to let you know that just this uh, year, beginning of 2020, we just opened our new academic advising center. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, about a handful now of academic advisors who are hired by Wheaton College who will be contacting your students in the coming weeks and months, making sure they're prepared for first year advising process from now through July, getting them set up for their first year of classes, and they'll be working with them, of course, all the way through graduation. We have very high graduation rates, great retention rates at Wheaton. They're, in fact, astronomically high based on the numbers, but we always want to make sure students have all the support they need especially with a rising number of first-generation college students. We're so grateful to have many students choosing Wheaton and want to assist all of our students towards graduation. All right, a couple other questions that come in here. These two might be a little um, on it. Uh, one person asked, is Wheaton worth the cost? And then Shuri asked, did any of her, uh, excuse me, Xi Jin asked, how do you feel about the job opportunities after graduation and how good are the career services at Wheaton College? I'd like to see if any of our panelists have 
one, how would you answer? Is Wheaton worth the cost? Sure. I hope I know yeah. what I'd say. <laughs> uh, I'll take that because I have, I have, uh, we, we have two recent Wheaton graduates who I can say are, are, are currently employed. Granted, they're at home because of the COVID crisis, but they're working from home. One is a legislative fellow in DC for a center in house office, and then the other one is working for a graphic design company. But um, is it worth the cost? Absolutely. Um, it, and it's not just the education, it kind of goes back to um, you know, what's special about Wheaton. And I think it's the community, it's the people, it's not just preparing them and giving them a good education, but it's preparing them and allowing them to be in an environment where they can make their faith their own. Um, mm -hmm. And I can tell you when they finish with a Wheaton education, they will be able to critically think, communicate, they'll know who they are, right? And they're gonna have the skills to go and do whatever God wants them to do. Um, and I mean, uh, we didn't force our kids to go to Wheaton. I'm not sure how all three actually went to Wheaton, but we, we just feel really blessed that they had the opportunity to go and, and, and be there. Very nice, yes, thank you for sharing. Oh, go ahead, James Family, please. I was just gonna say, yes, the short answer is yes, Wheaton is worth it. <laughs> I mean, I could go into so many reasons, but my girls feel ready. My senior, she is gonna go overseas as a missionary and she's been invited back to teach in El Camino. So Lord willing, she'll be able to raise, get a salary and a you know, ministry partners to go with her. And my daughter, other daughter is going, she's doing the three, two program. And she says, mom, it is so rigorous at Wheaton with my nursing program that I just really feel prepared. And I'm not, it wasn't just academic. She's, she just felt like, she, like, um, the Franke said, just the whole critical thinking aspect. I'm not just answering questions and filling in a bubble. I've learned how to really think critically and really hard about these, these different things. And there's so many things that the girls have said, I wish I could study some more. There are so many things that have piqued their interest because of the little more arts aspect that they said, I could go and get another major in this. And they've been mentioning all these different things that they ha are so interested in as a result of the different classes they've been able to take at Wheaton College. Well, and, and I'll, I'll add to that is uh, when our second daughter who, who wants to be a nurse was looking at schools, I, I kept asking that same question, is it worth it? Uh, there's great Christian schools that have good four-year nursing programs uh, and, you know, really let's at least really do due diligence and look at some other really good options. Uh, and I was pushing her a little harder on that, uh, even though I love Wheaton. So even though we're, you know, we're uh, Wheaton alum, I still wanted to keep the doors open for her. But I am, she, she finally came to me and said, Dad, I know that it's, I can't do it or in four years necessarily, though now there's an option to do that. Um, but I know I want to go to the best liberal arts school and, um, I couldn't argue with that. Uh, and, and her experience has been so rich uh, and so great and so forming. And I know from my own experience that uh, the education you, that we got at Wheaton and that they still uh, offer is, is so top of the notch that you were really prepared uh, and you will lead in wherever you go uh, through that. So I just uh, am very happy we made the decision that we made for both our girls. I think I'd add too that it's like, I think that one of the things that happens at Wheaton is like you're, you're, you're bringing your, you're hoping your kids will grow in their faith. And it's like this formulative time for them to figure things out for themselves. And a lot of things are, are occurring during the time that they're there. There's opportunities for them to explore and figure out what degrees they want to be in, what's your major. There's opportunities for them to get experience through internships. I mean, there's so many opportunities that kind of help them to become this whole person. And so, you know, I know that our daughter is a sophomore, but already she had an internship last summer. Um, just really looking forward to seeing what God has in store for her. But her, her professors are helping her figure things out, her counselors, there's just a lot of, of support that really put them on that road to what God has for their, for their, the purpose for their lives. And um, that's something that's priceless, if you ask me. 
Yeah, one thing I would say, Jason, is um, that, I've, uh, that I've seen that Wheaton has really stepped up the last five years is making a lot of investments in the CBC or the Career Ver Vocation yeah. Center or whatever. Um, not just in terms of, you know, getting the kids ready to look for that job and what, what their skills are and, and, and how that, that meshes with their passions and their, and their gifts and abilities, but just having more opportunities through the networking and, and different alumni. You know, Emily had an internship in D.C. through networking. Claire had an internship, you know, at, at Wheaton that, that, mm -hmm. that helped her, you know, launch into graphic design and things. It, 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 I've noticed in the five years that we've kind of been, you know, really invested in Wheaton with our kids being there that, that Wheaton is definitely making those investments to have those opportunities for the kids. Yeah, can I, I, I want to jump in on that because uh, my son, who's a senior in high school, has, my, my both our daughters kind of knew what they wanted to do, uh, but my son doesn't, and I have watched that uh, career program that they have all throughout the four years that they're there. I've been so impressed with that, and when I've gone with my son to every other school, I've asked, what are they doing? And there is nothing like what we doing uh, to help kids uh, figure out where they want to go in their careers. Um, the program that they're doing is just incredible. I've been so impressed with that. Um, and I haven't seen that. I've asked, uh, I've asked very pointed questions at the schools. My son has gone and it's, it's like what it was when we were in school, which is, you know, when you're a senior, they'll help you write your resume and then you go forward. But they do so <laughs> much more now. Um, that's just really cool stuff. Jason, can I just add that uh, in the mail, our parents of admits and confirms will soon be receiving the 2019 CVC Center for Vocation and Career Report, which shows a 99% landing rate six months out of Wheaton, which means that after six months, within six months, they're either in a job with promise of career advancement or military or pursuing further education in professional programs, graduate or uh, medical school, law school. That's phenomenal. It, it really is phenomenal. Thank you, Sylvia, for sharing that. And yes, you should be receiving that. Uh, I've been told it's dropping the mail tomorrow, but we'll see. You can tell that the USPS has been doing a little different timings on mail, but you should receive that definitely before the end of the month. So we're very grateful for that. We had a few questions come in um, specifically about just financial aid, average debt. I want to address those a little briefly. And I also want to make a plug, as Sylvia Vasquez did in the, the chat feature, to make sure to connect with a financial aid advisor at Wheaton College through our student financial services team. We do encourage everyone to, if you are wanting to, um, to get the fullest financial aid package to submit a FAFSA and make sure that we can be as generous with you to make it possible to come to Wheaton College. Our commitment is access and affordability for every student we admit. This may come as a shock, but we don't admit students so that they can't come. We actually want students we admit to come to Wheaton College. Uh, and so we do encourage families as they're considering all of the various factors to making a Wheaton College decision. Finances absolutely is one of them. A couple of questions that came in, average amount of debt, loan debt a student graduates with, I saw that was answered a couple times. Um, it's a little over $27,000, which is below the national average for four-year liberal arts colleges. One question from Merlene was, how many students receive no financial aid or scholarships and do have to pay full tuition? It's about 20 to 25% of our students do come to Wheaton College without um, need-based or scholarship aid. But of those who do take out aid, um, we of course want to be as generous as possible. And one other thing to note is while there are many families who may have to pull full freight for Wheaton College, Wheaton actually invests a dollar and 10 cents for every dollar any family invests full cost in educational services and student facing services. There is no family who is putting money towards Wheaton College who's getting the short end of the deal. Everyone is benefiting from the investment Wheaton makes in families' educations at Wheaton. And of course, it would be worth noting, we want families from all different walks of life and financial circumstances to come to Wheaton College too. That's why we invest so heavily in need-based financial aid to provide generous need-based aid packages for those who qualify for need. And also the New York Times, the last I saw the report two years ago, put Wheaton in the top 20 colleges for greatest socioeconomic diversity among the top tier liberal arts colleges nationwide. Jason with, that, Jason, with that loan amount, I think it's important to note that Wheaton is in the top 1%, uh, I believe, nationally for loan default rates, meaning that uh, in this case, 1% of our students with loans default. Uh, when you're looking at colleges that have a, a 27 to 30 
a thousand dollar average debt for some of those schools students are defaulting at 20 30 percent rates so our students graduate with uh with a commitment to repay their loans and the ability to do that because of their land rates thank you sylvia and thank you for providing that context and the entire realm of higher education for how wheaton college both steward as our resources as well but make sure that your students will graduate on time without debts that they cannot handle and be launched into their careers um, and also into their callings that the Lord might have for them. Another question that came through that I thought would be helpful to talk about that transition to Wheaton, to transition to college in general, Rhoda Kiefer asked, what challenges did your family face sending your child so far from home? What support did the Wheaton community provide? And I think the, maybe the Fromkeys and the Savages might be the best ones to mention this, though I'm sure that James and Paige's uh, you know, even if you're either 20 minutes away or 40 minutes away, I'm sure the loss is still there. So I don't want to minimize that. <laughs> but maybe for our out-of-state parents who are on the call, could you share a little bit about uh, the challenges sending your child from home and support that the Wheaton community provided? Well, I, I guess um, I remember our, our oldest daughter got sick about, I don't know, eight times her first semester. She was always calling home, I'm sick again. And cold. yeah, just, not bad sick, just, just you know, you know, but um. She had people on her floor who would take, you know, go pick stuff up for her, bring her a meal, go to the run to the store for her. The health center, she visited the health center <laughs> repeatedly. Um, even public safety got involved sometimes. I mean, whoever saw that she wasn't doing well would put an arm around her and take her where she needed to be. And she felt that. I mean, you know, it's, it's so hard being home, uh, far from home, but um, it's a quick flight. And um, again, like we talked about it before, it's so worth it. And she would say the same thing. Yeah, Thomas never calls us, so I'm pretty sure that he's got a lot of people taking care of him. He, he literally never calls us. But, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a good community. And another thing that I, I think is, I, I've seen as a positive is there's a Wheaton like parent Facebook page. And a lot of times parents will hop on there and be like, you know, my kid's sick and someone who lives close by will be like, yeah, no problem. I can go out and get him something. I mean, it's, it's. And also, let me tell you this story. There was some, there was a kid who needed an x-ray and had no car. And so the parent was on the parent page talking about this need. One of the professors volunteered to go pick the kid up, took him to the x-ray. I mean, it was so, it's amazing to watch the yeah. members of the community who are actually on site take care and to minister to the parents who are so far away. So a lot of people willing to just chip in and grab a meal for somebody, pick up a cake for somebody's birthday. I mean, there's a lot of that that goes on and it's kind of fun to watch on that parent Facebook page. Well, for us, we're here in South Jersey and uh, it's a pretty decent <laughs> distance. Uh, I personally had a hard time um, with our first son going to Wheaton. Uh, I love to celebrate everything, and uh, as it turns out, both of my boys have September birthdays. So the, <laughs> the first birthday of freshman year is always very difficult. Actually, that's not true. The first birth, the birthday every year is difficult <laughs> when they're far away. And I remember when our older son, when he turned 18, again, September boys, he was uh, living in Traber, and they had a tradition for birth celebrating birthdays. It was a very special tradition. And I remember they posted on Facebook, you know, he had like markers stuff all over him because they were just celebrating. And it was so fun to see how as a floor, they helped celebrate and make his birthday special. I know it sounds kind of weird, but you know, I mean, they're young guys, they, but they made it very special for him. Yeah, they didn't sign a card, they signed his torso. There's a pair of looking at like, huh? what? <laughs> but for him, just the smile said everything. It was like he I had know. found brothers. And with our second son, who's out there now, uh, well, our older son ended up getting, like you said, got married and they live in Wheaton. So it was kind of nice when our second son went out there because he has, you know, his brother and his sister-in-law in the area. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention real quick was that a lot of times when you go out there as a parent, either on orientation weekend or family weekend, you will connect with other parents mm -hmm. and connecting with other parents 
is wonderful because sometimes there'll be a parent who lives in the area who will say, oh, well, if your child isn't able to come home for fall break, they're more than welcome to come to our house. Or they might be able to do weekends somewhere, you know, at another student's home. So there are lots of ways that out of town students can feel very comfortable and very at home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to extend that not even just for out of town students, but also for international students. Just a quick breakdown on some numbers. About 20% of each class uh, that enters Wheaton in the fall comes from Illinois, meaning 80% of our students come from outside of Illinois. And in fact, in our last class alone, 15% of our students came from outside of the United States, either because their families were missionaries or um, diplomats, military, serving other countries, what have you, or a, actually a sizable number, about 5% of our students are international students, uh, those who need an F-1 visa to come and study the United States and invest in, again, what it can be known in many places, the best Christian liberal arts education available around the world. Um, I wanna, there's two questions that came up. Uh, one was from Freddie Mato, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. What are some of the ways that Wheaton welcomes international students and helps them to belong? And then Joshua asked this, we hear only good things about Wheaton in the supportive community. Our son has lived in Asia for the past 12 years and there are so many things he doesn't know and that even he doesn't know about living in the United States. Any suggestions for him to know about that transition? I wanna answer briefly about the support we have for international students, just on an institutional level to make that clear. But then to our panelists, uh, what are some suggestions about living in the United States? And maybe for our local Chicagoland-based families, things to know about living outside of Chicago, near Chicago, and what that can mean to acclimate uh, to living um, in Wheaton. So institutional support for international students. Both international students and missionary kids and third culture kids have access, like everyone does, but of course primarily for them, through our International Student Programs Office. Jerry Weir is the director of the program with other support staff and through programs like MUCAPA, which supports third culture kids, um, other gatherings um, and other different clubs and activities, there's a whole support system for our large group of families and students who come from overseas or outside the United States and invest in Wheaton College for four years. Whether that's over Thanksgiving breaks when some students will go home but other students will stay on campus or just with general cultural sharing opportunities, really influential opportunities. And one especially powerful program that helps all students who are coming from abroad transition to the U.S. is our pre-orientation program for TCKs, third culture kids, and international students, Passport to Wheaton. This takes place prior to orientation where all of our students will still participate, but helps them go over things like, how do you get connected with your one-to-one -one mentor who has already made the transition from out of the country to the United States and actually get that connection started now? A panel with other families who have made that trajectory before. Get to know the staff in ISP, International Student Programs, to actually get to know and build those connections. And for students who are F1 visa holders, how to maintain current status and ensure that you can take advantage of everything that we has offer all the way through graduation. But for again, for anyone coming from outside the country or those unfamiliar with Chicagoland, what advice parents um, looking at, uh, especially the um, Pages and the James family, um, that you might have for adjusting to the US and especially Chicagoland for those who are from out of the country or from outside the state? Okay, so I am a TCK and I grew up most of my life in Malaysia, Singapore and the Philippines. So it was a real shock to come here and I did not know about weather very well. So one thing I would say is buy your child a warm coat. <laughs> and we're talking a warm, warm, warm coat. <laughs> um, I finally had some really kind friends take me aside and say, you are not dressed for this weather. And they taught me about long underwear and they taught me about all kinds of things that would help me feel much more comfortable in this weather. Um, that's, that's one big thing. And you, you would be surprised, they didn't have the program that they have now, but even without the, Jason, I cannot remember the name of it because it's so long, <laughs> but the international, the one that, you know, Jerry Weir's office, because I know Jerry, um, there are faculty member people, there are parents, like we have international students at our home because that's my, my passion and my heart. Um, and, and people will invite people over just to say, hey, I see that you don't have a place. Would you want to come to Thanksgiving? And that's just such a beautiful thing that I've seen. I hear that happening in different people's homes on Sunday night. You know, the kids have to be willing, though, to take a risk to do this because it's scary for the TCKs and international kids to, to make that risk to say, I'm going to go to some place that I don't know and, and invest also. So kind of it's a two-way street there. But I would say that um, 
being willing to be vulnerable and to, you know, know to take risks in that way um, with finding people who are local to help you with your clothing from the basics of clothing to <laughs> willing to go out to say, someone invited me to Thanksgiving. I should not just sit in my dorm room. I really should go to Thanksgiving type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that there's also things like you said, going into Chicago, the students, they can take the train. It's really close. Um, my daughter and lots of girls on her floor would go to the Art Institute. And, and then they did a lot of things in Wheaton itself. So um, my daughter was one of those who took someone from another country to get some of those clothes, the warmer clothes that she needed to the store. Um, so, um, you know, I just think that, you know, there are all, there's just a lot of different opportunities, especially just having Chicago as that hub, um, that city. And so um, she did a lot of things on weekends and on Christmas, they went to see all the Christmas trees in downtown, they went ice skating. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things that they did and they just take it they're just a couple miles away from the train station i think the other part i would add from the outside you know kind of um to your point is that the anxiety oftentimes people when they're going to places that are considered to be big cities like chicago there can be you know negative s stories that are told on the news and people think it's going to be dangerous but i mean wheaton is in such a a great community the surrounding communities are terrific you know we're a suburban family. Our daughter grew up in the suburbs. I mean, the reality is she didn't know anything about the city. She, she's not, not someone being- Yeah, taking a train was a take, big deal. Taking a train. <laughs> a, you know, a suburban train is one thing, but not taking the L. I mean, not taking city buses, but it's it's so safe. And the, the city is just terrific. It just gives them another opportunity really to grow, to culturally. learn. Yeah, culturally to expand their, fly their, let their wings kind of be expanded. So. It's really been tremendous, I think, in so many aspects for her, and I think other families would, would just love it. You get kind of the combination of both. Great. I want to just acknowledge in the chat, um, because our, parent, our current parents are not maybe as up to speed on all the different policies and contingency plans of the college, I haven't been choosing some of the COVID-19 contingency plan questions to ask them. I just want to let you know, we'll share this in the chat and also in a follow-up email, um, that there is on our website a whole slew of updates that are open and available, including frequently asked questions, um, where we have answered to the fullest that we can an update on how we're responding to COVID-19 and also what that means for your individual students. And you'll also be getting word early next week about different updates to undergraduate admissions policies, including deposit deadlines, um, our different plans for um, helping students make sure they can have the time they need to explore what options that they have. Uh, currently, so you know, we do request that families and students let us know by May 1 what their um, decision will be so that we can have equity and treat our students on the wait list appropriately. However, we care more about students, not about process. If you or your family or student need more time, have financial issues that are preventing you from being able to say yes to Wheaton right now, contact us at admissions, admissions at wheaton.edu, or email or call your personal admissions counselor who I'm sure you have their contact information. If you don't, you can find it at wheaton.edu slash connect. And we would love to work with you individually to find the right pathway forward. But again, be checking your emails and your student emails early next week. We'll be providing a much fuller response to some of those um, and make sure that that is widely shared. Um, <laughs> maybe a fun question or not from Clemens and Eileen Kim. Do students get snowed in often at the airport during winter months? Uh, leave that up to our parents and figure out if they've ever had that experience. I have. I'll say that O'Hare is actually pretty used to handling this compared to one which one airport which will go nameless on the East Coast that I flew into while on a trip to Brazil and a squall hit as if they've never had this before and then kept me on the tarmac for three hours. Well, wow. this is why we don't have programs in Antarctica, Jason. So I'm glad you raised that. Rationales, absolutely. Um, but again, uh, adjusting to the weather, we've talked a little bit about gear. Uh, what does it look like for those traveling in and out of state or out of the country to be able to handle that well? Um, and maybe the savages of the front piece can talk about that, especially as it comes on breaks and travel times. Yeah, we actually, um, both, both of our boys have been involved in gospel choir in their time at Wheaton, and we were out last, last April for the, gospel, the um, spring concert and woke up Sunday morning on the day we were supposed to leave to uh, seven inches of snow and ended up spending a, another evening in Chicago and flying out the next day. So, 
Um, that was our first time actually getting snowed in. We just didn't expect it in April. So it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> The bigger issue isn't really can they handle the snow in Chicago. It's for us, can they handle it here in Charlotte, right? So do we get a little freezing rain? We get more concerned about are they going to make it home or are we going to get them up there? Because Charlotte really, when the inclement weather comes through the Midwest and the Southeast here, we just, we shut down. <laughs> Great. Well, I know uh, I want to thank our panelists for their time. I have one more question to ask uh, to share advice with the prospective innovative parents that are on the call today. But just a couple tidbits to make sure we've got them. One, we're able to save and answer all, we're able to save the questions that come through in the chat and we'll do our absolute level best to get answers to you out by end of day tomorrow. Probably got a little bit more than we had expected given the, if you'd asked me on Monday, I thought we'd have 40 families on the call. This is a little bit more than that, <laughs> uh, but we will definitely get questions answered. And if you don't get your question answered or you feel like your question wasn't addressed in the way you'd wanted it, please reach us at admissions at wheaton.edu or contact your personal admissions counselor for your state or region at wheaton.edu slash connect, where we'll make sure you get your questions answered. We again, strongly encourage each one of your students to choose Wheaton. I hope you would not be on the call if you didn't think that Wheaton was going to be a great place for your students. We believe they're a fit here. And so if your family feels ready to make that commitment now or in the near future, we do encourage you to go to choose.wheaton.edu, submit your confirmation form and say yes to Wheaton. I really believe you'll be glad that you did. Now finally, the last question I'd like to give to our current panelists for the families in the room, what advice do you have for parents? Advice for parents since you've gone the way before, about to help make this final transition in the spring of their senior year for many, or for those families who are transitioning with their student from one college to another, any advice you give for them as they prepare for the transition to Wheaton College? I would say, um, help your child think through a place that's not just great on one major, but it's really solid throughout because more than likely they might change and decide they really don't want to go into medical school when they get through biology class. They really would like to do anthropology or something. So you want to really think through that. And then I think ultimately, I mean, the Lord is going to help guide your family and, and lean into him and what he would have you, you know, do as a family. Um, and, and, and ultimately you want to say, where is my child going to look more like Jesus at the end of the four years? I mean, are they going to look like Jesus? Well, you know, will they, will they learn and grow and be challenged to grow in their faith because they've been at X college? And so that's what you really want to think through and pray through as a family. Um, because we can give you lots of numbers. We can give you lots of stats. And I would say, yes, yes, Wheaton, go Wheaton, because I'm a cheerleader for Wheaton. But, you know, it is where does God want your child to grow and thrive, that they will be able to go and serve him in whatever vocation or area they're going to be, you know, that God is going to call them to. I would say that, um, you know, there's something special about Wheaton that is really difficult to quantify. Mm -hmm. And um, we meet people from Wheaton. We have a lot of Wheaton gear that we wear. <laughs> and so we'll be out and about in different places on vacation or where we'll meet somebody else. Oh, did you go to Wheaton? And I cannot tell you what it's like when you meet another Wheaty, you're instant friends. I mean, there's just this connection that goes across decades, across time, across space. I mean, it's just incredible. If you know somebody else who's experienced that same four year thing that you experienced, mm -hmm. There is a bond, whether you've met that person in your life or not. And we are actually about to hop on another call with some friends of ours that we graduated from Wheaton with. And we're in a Bible study together right now. And we've been friends for however long we've been graduated, a long time. Um, but there's just this connection that doesn't end, whether you have met them or not. Again, it's just a really special, special thing. And I'm sorry I can't give it better words, but it's there, trust me. <laughs> That's good. I think to, to Jennifer's point, um, I know for Natalie and I and with Autumn Grace, the biggest thing that I would say to other parents is that you really need to pray about where your child should be because we just firmly believe that where they go to college and Wheaton has been just incredible for Autumn Grace, it could be where you meet your mate. I mean, where you really, a professor that you connect up with, your career is launched. I mean, there's been so many 
opportunities that she's had that we've just watched. You know, we kind of call them like the God sightings really in her life. And just one after another, her being excited and like, dad, you got to see this chapel service yeah, yeah. and come and come, you know, I come home like, you, you haven't watched it yet? Why haven't you looked at it? <laughs> and so, of course, through all the COVID-19 stuff, yes. I mean, she's, you know, she, we're watching her grow so in that particular. Connected, even with yeah. everyone, so many, you know, and encouraging one another. She was going to go to Copenhagen um, in the fall and, you know, that, you know, that's not probably going to happen. And um, I mean, in the summer she was going to the Philippines. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there was some kind of hope stashed there, but everybody's rallied around. They've been talking about God's plan and their purpose in their lives. And they've just readjusted. And I've seen it with her friends as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, I attribute that to the growth that occurred those first two years um, with her being at Wheaton. So I'd have to say the same thing. You really can't quantify because that's what you want to see with your kids. You want to see that from the time they're born. Right. You want to see them, you know, love the Lord with all their, their heart, their soul, and their mind. You want to see that. And and we've seen that exemplified. And I really have to attribute a lot of that to her experiences at Wheaton. Right. The last thing I'll add is don't underestimate community. I know we've all talked about community a lot tonight. Every school is talking about community, but it's real at Wheaton. Sure. It's authentic. It's sincere. And you're watching these students that come that don't even know one another and just connecting in Christ is just such an amazing thing that, you know, for us to walk away, we're thinking that Autumn Grace is going to be like crying that we're leaving. We're the ones crying because she just felt like I found my people. And it just has been such a powerful thing just to watch. Um, you know, now with her being at home, that's one of the things um, she's not crazy. We keep saying is that she's our sweet mate. And she was like, I don't want to be your sweet mate, but it's, <laughs> but it's been terrific that we're all in community together and she's experiencing it still, obviously with platforms like zoom and things like that. So it's just been a great pres- you know, great thing to watch and how she's connected, you know, knows all the different staff and faculty and people know her by name. It's, it's been life changing. I guess my advice would, um, be to encourage your children to go in just with an open mind, right? Just, um, you know, just go in like, like, like it was mentioned earlier, who knows what your major is going to be. You may think it's one thing. It, it might, God might show you some, something totally different. And as a parent, <laughs> just let them go that way. <laughs> just, just let them follow God. And it's, and it's, you know, it, it's not our plans. It's God directing their steps. Right. So, um, that would be mine. It, you know, it's hard to let your kids go, but man, it's not that hard when you're sending them to weed. So. And I think, you know, simply it's something that we've been praying about with our kids for a long time, that they would hear God's call and follow it wherever that might lead. Uh, you know, it's st- really, we're just echoing what has already been said. Uh, keep and keep praying with your children and, uh, let them know that we're praying behind them. You know, we always have been, but we'll continue to do so. Uh, allow them to just explore. You know, I mean, it's such a wonderful time for them these years where they can uh, take on tasks and uh, just try to develop their skills and see what their interests are and where God might want to use them. They may end up exploring options they never even thought about before. Uh, courses that they never thought they'd be interested in before. And that's been a real joy to watch with both of our boys. And that's one of the things that I would encourage you kind of stand back and, you know, keep them in prayer and give them advice when you need to and support them when they, you need to and let them, let them soar. Let them soar. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you all. Uh, and one again, I want to say thank you first to our current parent panelists. You guys have been so generous with your time. I'm so, so grateful. And if you saw in the chat, many folks have said thank you. And so the prospective parents, the parents of our admitted students, thank you mm-hmm. for being generous with your time to consider Wheaton on your short list and consider actually sending and investing even further to send your child to Wheaton. I know, and I want you to know that we know that the decision that your student's going to make this spring is not just a short-term one fall decision. It isn't really even just a four-year decision. It's a 40-year decision. Yeah. Amen. And I just want to say we are so grateful that we're on that list of institutions that you would trust to potentially send your daughter or your son to, 
to be a partner with them, to help them grow into who they're going to be in the Lord, to give them every tool they need academically and vocationally to launch into the calling that the Lord has for them. Mm -hmm. We know it's a long time from now to think 40 years, but we know the days that they're going to be investing here at Wheaton are going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. Again, we're so grateful for your time. We will pass along information, follow up, check your emails. If you're not getting our emails, feel free to contact us at, at, at admissions with an S at wheaton.edu. We'd love to get you on our mailing list and make sure that we're connecting with you and your son and daughter um, through the remainder of the spring as we make a final decision with you. And hopefully you'll be uh, saying yes to Wheaton. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night or morning where you're at. Again, a thank you to our current parents who have generously given their time and insight. Thank you so very much. God Bye. bless. Stay safe. And we'll hope to see you at Wheaton in the future. God bless.